Imperial fleet is still a threat. Vanguard Squadron, let's make history. This is it, Titan Squadron. Everything we've done has led to this. Finish those Vanguard scum! This is Star Wars Squadrons. Earn your wings in a single-player story spanning two factions. All stations! Fire on that ship! And master multiplayer battles as a squadron of five. With the option to play the entire game in VR. This is the definitive Star Wars pilot experience. Uh, come on, come on! Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Um, today we're talking about Star Wars Squadron, just released for the Xbox, PlayStation 4, and PC. And I have to say, this game is fun. I've really been anticipating this game all summer, or at least whenever they announced it this summer, um, for it to come out. And so pretty much this game is a take on the old Squadron games that came out. Personally, I grew up on Rogue Squadron on the GameCube. And this is EA's um, take on those type of games, kind of like how they redid the Battlefront games. Um, so pretty much this game is just a flying only type of game. Even in campaign when you're on your station, you just click to where you want to go. But it's, this game is only flying. They put so much detail into it. And at first I will say I was a little skeptical because I played Battlefront by EA and Battlefront 2. And I did horrible when it comes to flying the ships. I did It was ridiculously bad. So I was a little worried that ship combat would be kind of bad, but it's nothing like that. In this game, there is so much attention to detail. And what I mean by that is when you're, when you're playing, it's just not just jump in and just start shooting and flying around. You have to be aware of everything going on with you. It's, do you put uh, more power into engines if you're trying to attack something? Um, do you go ahead and put more power into speed if you're trying to catch up to your target or maybe speed up and then do a drift by cutting the engine off and turning real hard? Or do you put in, uh, do you put more power into your shields if you have a ship that has shields so that someone's attacking from the back or if you're doing a bombing run in front? You want to make sure that um, you're fully protected with shields. There is so much to constantly keep thinking about in this game that, yeah, there is a learning curve. Um, when I first started playing the game, it took me about just a few minutes to get the hang of it, but I got it. As far as my wife, for example, and she is a gamer, it took her a little bit longer. She's still trying to figure it out, but it, there is definitely a learning curve. And as to playing through campaign, it's not just easy right out the gate. This game is not for everyone. I will definitely say you can probably tell by the price tag. This game came out at $40. It's not a game for everyone, but it's something I definitely would recommend to anyone, especially ones that are Star Wars fans. If you're just really into the Star Wars game and the lore, um, then you definitely should check this game out. Um, it like for people like me, it didn't take long for me to get it. My wife's a gamer. But the controls kind of were a little confusing to her and she's still trying to figure it out, but it's definitely worth figuring out. Now, I would say playing things like the campaign. Campaign's pretty good. The characters I don't care a whole lot about, but the graphics um, look really good. You can tell the people that are really important because they have more focus on how well they how well they look. Um, and, the, and the cool thing is there are some cameos. There are some cameos. There are some cameos for first time for certain characters that have ever been in a video game, you know, it could have been from the Star Wars movie or the Star Wars shows, but they do have some cameos. So it's kind of just further connects the Star Wars world. Um, and it's just really cool to just see all those things, um, all those characters from different uh, genres or different parts of Star Wars, all showing that they're all in one connected universe. But even though the campaign is good, I think it's about eight hours or so, it is good. But where I'm really interested is the multiplayer. Pretty much when you dive into multiplayer, you have two different modes. Um, you have your normal dog fighting, which is just, you know, team deathmatch. The team with the most kills wins. And then you have this other mode where you're actually trying to take down the other team's capital ship, which is really fun and really was, requires a lot of teamwork working together to be able to take out the capital ship before the other person does. Um, or the other team does. It's pretty fun. I do question if it's gonna get stale after a while of just having two modes and eventually get tired. You do have a lot of different things like customization. Customization is pretty cool. You can customize your pilot who you'll never see. The only time you ever really see your pilot is for, I guess, like gloating to some degree. I don't know if that's the right terminology, but you see them at the end of each match for whoever the winning team is. So if you won, oh, you could see your character do a cool stance, you know. Um, 
the same thing with ships. You never really see your ship besides before, uh, before and after of a match. You'll see your fly in, you'll see your fly out, but you never see your ship because that's another thing about this game. This game is 100% in first person. A lot of people may not care about that. Back in Rogue Squadron days, I used to switch back and forth between first and third, but this game is only in first person. So it's like you actually in the cockpit flying around. Um, so it kind of gives you that more sense of, of, of just really being in there. I highly recommend playing this on the biggest screen that you have. I have a, um, a Xbox One X and that's what I played this on. I do have the other systems too, but I prefer to play this on Xbox since I, since I don't have VR and this game is fully in VR. Um, I want it to get the best graphics. That I want it to look the best and the Xbox is the best device that I have in my house right now when it comes to graphic fidelity. So I, I played it on that instead of like the PlayStation or anything. Um, and the game looks great. I really wish I could have played it in full VR because there's times when people are flying above me and I want to look up and I kind of find myself trying to look up a little bit, but then I'm realizing, no, I can't look up because I'm not in VR, but the, you know, this game is, I, I, I have heard that people that do have VR, that this game um, is great in VR, especially if you have a flight stick with you as well, because this game does support flight stick. Um, but even still, even on, on console, it's great. The other thing is this game is cross-play, so it doesn't matter if, if one person's on PlayStation, the other person's on Xbox, the other person's on PC, you guys can all play together as long as you have that cross-play um, switch turned on, which by default it is, and then everyone can play, and I think more games should embrace that, and more games should be like that, so I do commend EA for making a push towards doing more like that but as far as the game goes um there's bugs here and there nothing crazy servers seem to be pretty good it doesn't take me um too long to even get into a match hopefully that does show that there is an interest right now we'll have to see as the time goes on you, you can definitely tell that there's a level of people that were just novice just starting off like a lot like when this game first went live on friday a lot of people you know, I was just winning like crazy. Um, and then as people started to play more um, and really get the hang of it, it started, matches started to get a little bit harder. Um, and you can tell the skill level starting to really show itself more. So I'm very curious to see as time goes on how well these people are going to be. Because again, this is not a game for everyone. There's so much you can do with your ships if you um, really learn how to play the game well. But regardless of saying all that, um, one of the things that you can do in multiplayer is customize your ship. So even though you don't really see the outside of your ship um, too much, other people can see it obviously, and you see it every now and then. You see it in the hangar, you see it when you fly into a match, you see it when you fly out. But the, what you really are looking at your cockpit, and you can do a lot of different um, changes to that. You know, you can add little um, like things dangling down. You, you put like a little Darth Vader hologram down or a little bobblehead. Um, things like that you can add to your cup and kind of decorate it and make it your ship. Um, you and, you know, and it's just little cool, little nice things that you can do. As far as I've seen right now, there's no microtransactions. Will EA add microtransactions later? Who knows? But as right now, they're not there. But um, as far as gameplay goes, it's really fun. Um, just being able to get into that, you know, one of your favorite um, ships fly around flying is so again if you get the hang of it flying is so it feels so good it feels so good and it's so fun and it's just you know dodging in and out of, of asteroids or space stations or shooting you know, you know doing where uh two ships are flying right towards each other and right before you know uh, you clash, you blow one up and fly right through it you know I do also appreciate how much detail EA is putting towards this game um, as far as the fact that the New Republic uses shields on their ships the Empire does not and they didn't just put shields on one ship just for balancing um, of the game they actually did uh, they did other things to make sure that it was fair because at no point in time do you feel one side is just so much more better than the other I personally prefer the New Republic because you have more stuff to kind of fool around with you have your your speed that you can overdo your engines you can overdo your lasers you can overdo your um shields the empire is something like that too they don't have shields but you can really put a lot of power into your lasers if you want to um or into your speed so you know there's a few different things that you can do 
Um, and then it, you do have a lot of customization as far as your weaponry goes. What you're going to go outside? Are you going to bring a repair droid with you? Are you going to put ion cannons, regular missiles? What kind of laser you're going to do? Long range, rapid fire. There are so many different customization options where you can play around with it and get a different experience. And you can make it where no one ship is kind of the same. So, you know, it's definitely fun. It's definitely worth getting your friends, getting a squad, and just playing together. Again, I really hope EA sticks with it. I hope that they add more to the game. They see that this is a game that a lot of people actually like, and they add more to it. Um, you know, and they and they go ahead and maybe add different, different errors into the game. You have the Clone Wars. You have the First Order, you know, era, you know, or, or, or even the Old Republic. But just do different things and not just always stick to just Rebels versus Empire. Just kind of mix up, give some new ship varieties, and just kind of keep everything fresh. Um, because it does seem like they're kind of limited on like certain things like game modes or whatever. But I feel like if they really put the effort, they could probably throw a lot of crazy things in here. Hopefully, this isn't like Battlefront 1 where it, they dropped the game and it didn't have a lot of content at first. And it was like, okay, you know, you, we, we didn't get a lot in, until the sequel. Um, not saying this game doesn't have a lot of content. But again, it's, it's a $40 game. You only have two different modes plus story mode. So, you know, you may feel repetitive over after a while, but because there's not any other game that I can think of like this on the market right now, this is definitely worth at least having in your library. So if you want to pick it up and play with your friends, no matter what system on, besides the Switch, obviously, you can do that. I definitely would recommend this game. This is a game that you need to have in your library to be able to play just to be able to sit down and just have some fun especially if you're star wars fans if you're not into flight sims and i don't know if this really count, counts as a flight sim um but if you're not really into those flying type of games and you're not into um star wars believe it or not there are some people <laughs> you know this may not be the best game for you but personally i definitely say pick it up <laughs> anyway that's just my thoughts on it uh hopefully you guys like the video if you do, go ahead and hit that like button. Um, there's also a bell to get notified when I post more videos. I have more videos coming up soon for some tech um, that's coming out, uh, for more games coming out, and just whatever. So again, like, comment, subscribe. If you have any ideas, go ahead and leave down in the comments, and I'll uh, catch you guys in the next one. See ya. You are the hope of this galaxy.